Hello, welcome back, open formers and YouTubers. Today, we want to talk about making our first uh, pimple form case with a time varying boundary condition. Okay, so in the last video, we talked about how these time varying boundary conditions work, and we have uh, uploaded uh, kind of a uh, comparison cases in the GitHub. Okay, so my GitHub should be in the right side. Okay, clear. And I'll go to this. Okay, uh, uh, we have four cases. We want the time varying cavity form. Okay, so let's. Well, we have to make a few changes anyway. So let's talk about a plan of action. So remember, we have uh, we have a case where we have uh, some fixed temperature here, equal T A, and then this is T equals T B. This is in the original cavity case, and then some sort, uh, depending on which is hotter, it will drive some convection current and this is a steady state okay so we have to break it down to a few steps we have to have a non-steady state so we have a simple to pimple uh, buoyant simple form to buoyant pimple form so that's the first one we want a time varying BC so that would have to do with the temperature only the temperature found uh, nothing else has to change so we want a sort of a we just want a sort of a CSV found with some maybe sign input okay maybe do it over 100 seconds or 1000 seconds yep so we do a sine, sine wave uh, input over 1000 seconds uh, to see what happens so this is just a plan uh, where do we want it to vary 500 to 600 kelvin then the other side this tb okay so ta can be some sort of sign varying input as we were discussing in the last videos some sign or some temp some time changing input so for the sake of simplicity i'll just use a sign input first and then here we're going to have a 300k uh, going out okay so 300k going out so i'll have a 300 kil uh, kelvin thing here yep yeah so yeah today uh let's just try and make this uh, csv input first and then we'll change the non-steady state to us uh i mean a steady state to a non-steady state all right so these two we must do it today uh, let's try to do it in this video okay so csv input uh, that's that's pretty uh, rudimentary to do so i'll do that later but first thing first i want this uh let's let's deal with this uh, simple form to pimple form so we'll need to take a look at uh, we need to compare all right so let me cd and clear github software and we'll go to open form Heat transfer YouTube, clear, and then we'll go to buoyant pimple foam time varying BC, and we want to look at the thermocouple test case. Okay. All right. So this is where the pimple foam solver inputs are being put. So we'll go to uh, time varying cavity foam, and this is the file we want to change. All right. So we have a constant system and validation. So let's get rid of the extra stuff first so we want to get rid of the stuff in the all run so i'm not going to have post processing here i'm going to cancel that cancel this cancel this cancel this and cancel this and we'll save and quit all right because you don't need anything else and we'll go to the control dictionary okay i can remove the validation file okay and let's go to system and there are only four files there. I don't need a sample. Okay. I'm going to clear this. And let's take a look the, at the control dictionary. CD control dict. Oh, uh, well, sorry. Should be a VI control dict. Yeah. All right. So, application. That's where they get the get application thing from. I need to change the buoyant simple to buoyant pimple. Okay. Alright, so that's that. 
let's take a look at uh, system and see what files we need. So block mesh dict is to do with geometry, so I'm not going to touch that. Let's take a look at the control dict to see what inputs we need. So we have a boy and pimple foam. We can start from the latest time instead of start time. All right, I'm just doing a step by step comparison, but late, starting from the latest time is always my preference. Okay, so start time is zero. Stop at end time and end time. Okay, we can leave it as that. Delta T, I can put it as uh, 0 0.01. Okay. Uh, and right interval, I can give it uh, 5000. Perch right. So perch right uh, means that I'm going to get rid of some of the time data files, which I do not want. So I'll just switch it to 0. Okay. Uh, right precision is 6. Right compression is off. Um, time format is general. Run modify runtime modifiable is true. Uh, adjust. Okay, let's do uh, let's do this. Adjust time step. Adjust time step. Okay. No. I'm just gonna copy and paste those things here. Max current number. Zero point five. Okay. That's just a management thing. Um, Alright, so there is a functions thing here which there is uh, nothing really for us because this is a this is part of the thermocouple case. It's nothing to do with a uh, pimple foam, right? So there'll be thermocouple properties, uh, yeah, which will describe the thermo mm, the pro the th thermo physical properties of the thermocouple. Uh, we don't need this because we are not putting this in at all. So the functions thing we can just leave it empty. We can just well, I don't know if we need this functions and then uh, open and close. I'm not gonna do anything there. It's kind of redundant, but uh, just in case we need that, in, in case we need an empty entry in there. But I doubt we will need an empty entry <coughs> just to make it run. But let's QA, quit everything. Okay. That, oh, shucks. Oh, no. Did I just... Okay, good. I saved it. WQ and quit. <coughs> okay, what's next? FV schemes. Let's go to FV schemes, which is very important. VI FV schemes. All right, let's go line by line to add in anything we need to do. So first thing first, it's no longer steady state. We need an Euler. Euler uh, DDT scheme. All right, instead of steady state, so Euler, and I'll save it here. Next thing we need is a Gauss linear gradient scheme, which we do have. Okay. All right. So for this divergent scheme, we'll need to add in entries that are missing from the left hand side to the right hand side. So U K U K H K epsilon omega and whatever is here mm, that okay it should be up to epsilon up to epsilon all these are okay see there are entries on the right hand side so but we have uh, some other things here 5k or well, 5k is in here okay Divergence of phi and r becomes a Gauss outprint. Okay, we might. I mean, just just from the principle of okay, this entry is missing. I'm just going to add it in, without uh, really understanding what it does. But if it works, it works. If it's an uh, extra piece of data, it will just be extra piece of data that we don't really need at all. So U H K. All right, we'll have a divergence of phi and e. This this entry is missing, so I'll just put it there first. Uh, just you know, kind of be redundant. So r, r is in, e is in. We have big k and small k, and we need this ekp thing, whatever this ekp thing is. Okay, so we'll just put this here. And we'll have a divergence of R. 
Okay, I'm just going to copy and paste it here. And divergence of JIII. This looks like a radiation kind of thing. Um, we'll just leave it here first. All right. As an entry. Otherwise, it should be okay. Now, Laplacian schemes, we have Ga Gauss linear orthogonal. That's fine. And SN gradient scheme is uh, default corrected. Okay. Let's do a default corrected here. So the rest we have here, interpolation schemes are linear, wall distribution is also here. So again, Laplacian, interpolation and SN gradient schemes, Laplacian, uh, interpolation and SN schemes, otherwise it's pretty much the same. So we have this extra wall distribution which we will not touch. So WQ and quit. And let's go to uh, FV solution. All right, let's go to FE solution and see what entries we need to put in. All right, so we have the solvers here, PRGH. All right, so the solver here is PCG instead of GAMG. So let's change the entry from GAMG to PCG. Okay, and precondition. And we just put the DIC here. Again, without really understanding what it's doing. But um, you'll just need to add in, you know, row by row of what, what uh, needs to be done. So I can just uh, copy and paste this here. All right, I can copy and paste this here. The row star. Yeah, so uh, we have the row star there. Row star is there. PRGH final. This is another one. You'll just add the entry in, in case it's needed. This is the bare minimum, minimum to make it run. It's not really, again, understanding what's going on, but these are the bare minimum to make it run. So, now this II, this II is to do with some um, yeah. This II is to do with some uh, um, radiation model. Okay, but for the sake of uh, copying, we'll just copy it in. All right. All right. So we're gonna copy this in. Again, uh, mindlessly copying it in without really no one knowing what it's doing. So there's no E field here. I can leave the E field out. So it's UHK, Epsilon, and Omega, and R at the final. So I'll just uh, follow suit everything here with the R at the back, which is basically all of this here and all of this here. And of course, we can add in an R entry in there as well just for the sake of completeness. Okay, R. So this is for radiation, not necessarily for the pimple foam. Um, yeah, we we'll just leave these things there as is. Um, relaxation factors, there's no entry here, so I'm just gonna leave that out. More importantly, instead of simple, we should have pimple. So I will add in the pimple the pimple uh, algorithm here, pimple inputs. So in case we need to use boil and pimple form, which we will use boil and pimple form. So we have no momentum predictor, and auto characters is one, and characters is two, blah, 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 blah. Uh, so we're not going to use simple form anymore. We're going to use a boil and pimple form. So let's save and quit. All right. So that's a FV solution. So we should have all the suitable input files now just to run buoyant pimple foam. So uh, let's let's just do for the sake of testing an all run. So instead of uh, running for let's say a thousand seconds we can do something for 50 seconds since we have made the time step so short. Let's do 
about 5, 50 seconds. And we want to check our boundary conditions again. CD0 and VIT. Okay, so we'll just we'll just uh, leave it as that to see whether buoyant pimple foam runs. This is just a test run. We haven't done the time varying st uh, test steps yet. So we're going to do all run N. And let's check. Let's see whether buoyant pimple foam runs with any errors. So we'll have all this done. So it's running in piezo mode. So it's starting to run. Perfect. So we have a very high quorant number as usual. Probably the time step is too big. Okay, but we'll leave it as it is. Okay, we'll probably run into some error, but at least you know buoyant pimple foam is running. The solver itself has enough inputs to work, which is great. Now um we'll probably let it run for a while until it uh this thing runs into an error due to the quorant number. Uh, but that's all I have for you this video. Next video, we'll probably want to start uh, debugging this uh, uh, debugging this uh, simulation, try and make it run uh, more properly with the right current numbers, and now also with the time varying temperature inputs and CSV files. Okay, so that's all I have for now. At least we have a buoyant pimple foam running on this thing. All right. Buoyant pimple foam. We can scroll all the way to the bottom, and all right, great. The current number has uh, dropped significantly, so that's not an issue anymore. Great. Okay, so um, that's all I have for you this video. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you guys next time, and of course, um, this will be on GitHub, and the I'll get at. Yeah, this, this will be on GitHub, don't worry. Uh, I'll paste a link in the description below. Okay, bye.